whoever said Edgar had no skill was off their head. Don't look at me! Five hours later. Edgar is clearly one of the easier ballers to climb with and I definitely felt this getting him to 800 trophies aka rank 26 especially compared to Mortis who I'm currently working on and he is a massive pain in the ass. I am a creature of the night! But equally as easy was getting Shelly to 800 trophies. I do have a video for that if you want to check it out right here. Without further ado let's Edgar jump right into it. Yeah! As always this challenge was done in showdown solo and there was no team in and this challenge was actually done with power. Edgar's supercharge. So let's go through some pros and some cons of Edgar. He's great in the 1v1 with most brawlers. He has a strong kit that synergizes really well, not really map dependent, and is easy to pick up and play. But some cons on the other hand would be that he's weak until he has his ultimate, he's very gadget dependent, easily bullied in the open from range brawlers, and it's difficult to beat other Edgars as well. For the build, let's start off with the gadgets. I think there's a good argument for both Let's Fly and Hardcore. Let's Fly can be clutch when you need to get away from a bad position or a start, i.e. two range ballers are like either side of you. However, most of the time when you jump in, I think popping Hardcore just guarantees that you will definitely win the trade, especially if the enemy has a few extra power cubes or has a powerful ultimate. So for me, it's a no to let's fly and an absolute yes thumbs up to hardcore next up are the star powers and i have to be honest i haven't used hard landing that much and i'm sure there is a use case for it and if so tell me in the comments but fisticuffs giving you extra healing per landed punch just screams delicious for me delicious and therefore i pick this 99.99999% of the time. All right, over to the gears then. I think for the most brawlers, it's going to be shield, gear, and damage gear. And for me, that stands even more true for Edgar, especially as the extra shield is great to make you even more tanky. And the damage gear to deal more damage when your health gets chunked down in a duel, which will happen most of the time. And I think with the lack of let's fly for the quick ultimate charge, you could swap one of these gears for the supercharge gear but i prefer to risk the lower charge rate for an overall more tankiness while i'm in my solo showdowns all right then so for the maps in terms of worst to best i would say the worst map is cavern churn i'm not a fan of this in most instances because it's difficult to beat a ball or a shelly and sometimes a buzz in a 1v1 on full health who are very common for this map so for example, if you go straight into the middle of the map and you know there's a Shelly or a Ball, you're going to run into them, and if you get too close, they're just going to kill you, and you're probably not going to have a chance to get out of it. Sometimes you can just about get your ultimate and jump up in the air, come back down, and pop your hardcore uh, gadget, which will help you survive in those clutch moments in one-on-ones. But I find that if there's a third party at all, then you are pretty much guaranteed to die. So you could say that in a lot of instances, but I'd say more so um, with the Cavern Churn map, and so I typically avoid it. And then if you stay on the outside of the map, well, then typically throwers and all of, you know, Ricos and stuff like that, that are waiting on the outside are going to kind of bully you, um, and especially you haven't got your ultimate yet. So just genuinely would probably say this is the only map that I would actively avoid with Edgar. And that's not to say that you can't have success on it. I just think overall your chances of having success on it are lower. Doom Drift then, just a little open, has a lot of range ballers and throwers, so unless you have your ultimate, it can be a little bit rough, but as soon as you have your ultimate, I think Doom Drift is, is fine. Same for Double Trouble, it's easier to get bullied in the middle, which is where you need to be to jump on people, so you have like the different bushes all around the middle, which is where you would typically be hiding with Edgar, so you can jump on people or get them when they're not looking. Obviously, as you go up the trophy range, you're gonna notice that a lot of people are just gonna check all of these bushes, and then once they check them and you're sort of between one or two or three different people while you're sort of trying to navigate around the middle there's just not enough cover and so i find that you just get bullied quite a lot um on this map and so i i, I tend to think that you know it's a little bit more on the rough side um stormy planes the galaxy and forsaken falls all have good rates of success with forsaken being quite good for end game collapse as you have the four different corners and then all of the grass in the middle like a cross so typically what happens is you'll have 
like a, a, a Miko or you'll have um, usually just like a Cordelius or whatever that kind of on those corners and then eventually you have to jump in typically there'll be one brawler in the middle so as you sort of jump and you can properly leave it till last minute and kind of guarantee yourself getting a kind of top um, four like, which is great sometimes even a top three so for that I would say that, that, that Forsaken is not too bad plus you're on an equal playing field because nobody has cubes so you know you if you do get the opportunity to go around and kill everybody <coughs> around the map, then that's great. But if not, then it's not a big deal. And then lastly, then you have Safety Center and Skull Creek, which are my favorite for climbing with Edgar. With good places to easily kite and hide, uh, but close enough to jump onto people. All right, so the strategy then. In general, you will do well hiding with Edgar and just waiting for your old map to jump on an unexpected brawler. You can absolutely do that. As I say, most of the time you will win in duels, but there are some brawlers to be careful of that I'll mention in a moment. Edgar's really quick at taking out boxes and his ammo punches reload really quickly, so don't be afraid to pick up a few cubes where you can around the map where it's safe to do so. Also, just your mere presence can easily apply pressure, so do bait your movement, especially when you're coming up close to bushes, you're not sure if people are there, and entice people to run away from you and walk into other brawlers where you can't. So, Typically what you want to do is you kind of want to like kind of pressure a, a brawler to kind of move away from you um, and as they're sort of moving around the map hopefully you'll push them into another brawler and then what you can do is you can kind of jump in if you've got your ultimate and then kind of do a, a clean up and third part yet and just do a one on one on whoever survives. Um, these strat strategies may actually change as we start to climb higher um, but for now this has worked really well for me. A lot of people might consider 800 trophies or rank 26 to be a little bit on the easier side. Um, I could see that perspective returning to the game after being out from over a year I'd say that the game in general feels a lot higher you definitely don't feel like you see as many bots from sort of like 500 trophies to 550 that's where they sort of start to really wean out um, and you can kind of tell when there's a bot in your game as well because when you load in and you see like the eight pictures come up you'll notice that bots kind of don't have anything selected it's just literally like their brawler um that they've got and no like icons or anything like that so that kind of gives you a bit of an idea if you probably have got a bot in the game not guaranteed just something that i've noticed but typically 500 to 550 trophies you don't really see any bots anymore uh, and i remember that being a little bit higher um than before so that's how i genuinely feel let me know if you think that the game has been pretty much the same but returning to it definitely feels like the skill cap um, it's got a lot higher and people just in general are a lot better all right then so for the brawlers to watch out for so we're not going to go through the brawlers that edgar's really good at i think he's it's going to be pretty obvious when to go in i mean typically just just to kind of caveat you, you will jump in where you can um and you will have success with most brawlers but there are just you know some to be careful of and typically where you can you're always going to want to try and third party and clean up because you can you know you can do that jump in so the brawlers that I would watch out for is Buzz. Um, so he can be a threat if he does an ultimate on you and after a first land attack. So typically a really good Buzz will kind of come out of a bush or they'll kind of get close to you and they'll attack you, then you'll ult. Even if they have ult, they'll try and get an attack off on you first, then they'll ult you and then they'll attack you. Um, and most times you won't actually have enough time to kind of pop hardcore or jump if you've got your ultimate to kind of get out of it. So um, Buzz can be really, really dangerous. And if he has like one or two power cubes, then you're, you're definitely more than likely going to die if you're caught out from him if he does pop his ultimate on you and you're kind of tapping your ultimate to jump as soon as you're unstunned sometimes you can get out of it uh, and then pop hardcore and have an attack back but that's kind of going to be your best bet and again that's kind of why i pick hardcore for those moments when you are sort of caught out if you are able to jump and kind of get out of a stun from buzz then when you hit hardcore you got more chance of surviving from the HP you get back from hitting, and also the extra HP that we took from the um, from our other legendary that we took. Uh, when I say legendary, I mean star power. All right, Piper. Although it might seem an easier target, most good Piper Pipers that I've come up against, sort of post 550 trophies, always have the gadget that pushes you away, um, and they slow you down. So it's best to keep an eye if she's landed and if she's battled up against the wall. Otherwise, would avoid her. So what we mean is, is if you're monitoring her and you've seen her for a while you'll know that it takes like three to four shots roughly for her to get her ultimate if she's not landed any shots yet and then you jump on you definitely land on top of her you may stand a chance at being able to take her out especially with hardcore um and 
I would typically only do it if she's backed up against the wall. So if I'm jumping into her and the only place she's got really is to sort of go towards the wall, then I think I have a pretty good chance if she slows me down of me getting her because the only way she can either go is left or right. She's got the wall in front of, behind her, sorry, and then I'm in front of her with, as Edgar. So she's only got two ways to go and you can kind of close the gap a bit better. But if it's straight out in the open, typically would avoid a piper. Um, Shirley and Shelly and Ball, so as I mentioned earlier um, on the Cavern Churn map, would just actively avoid getting into a fight with them unless they're on low health. Um, and if you're at a cube disadvantage, they will absolutely destroy you at close range. So it's not really worth it. And also, if you kind of bait a Shelly and get a little bit too close to them and let them back off because you realise... Oh, she's hit you once and now she's got home or whatever. Typically, she's, you know, a good Shelly will run clay pigeons and she'll, you know, do a lot of damage to you and you'll either have to ult to jump away um, or you'll die if you don't have your ultimate, most likely. So, um, would absolutely avoid running into Shelly and Balls unless you're third party in. Um, Spike, unless he's unloaded all these shots and you've just witnessed it, he can really destroy you. So, the second you jump in, he just throws out a couple of these spikes and you're, you're more than likely going to die. Um, Leon and Daryl feels like it's a bit of a 50-50 who comes out on top. So if you Clyde with a Leon really quickly, hit hardcore and then hit him, you're going to win. Um, but if it's kind of like a mid-range and he kind of sees you or he's kind of baited you out of the bush and you then run into him, but then he immediately backs off and you're kind of at this like just outside of the range of your punches um and leon gets a good few of his hits off like in his first attack or second attack you, you're probably gonna lose um against leon so I, I tend to avoid them and then last off i think Feng um can be quite frustrating as well so it can be a little bit tricky he typically runs the stun gadget um so the second you sort of jump into him you're gonna get stunned um so you're gonna lose your speed boost and he's probably gonna hit you a couple of times if he's not already not already got a few hits off and then do his ultimate and you're probably going to lose the one-on-one -on -one. so um not a big fan of thing and then lastly i think sam as well can be quite frustrating um with his power glove so depending obviously what he's got there um if he sort of uses his power glove like right on top of you it can be quite difficult to, to beat him as well uh, other than that as i said earlier i think it's all about positioning jumping good with your lands so when you do your ultimates especially when people aren't expecting it making sure you absolutely land on top of them or you kind of predict where they're going to go and if you can you want to try and ultimate a little bit past them so absolutely try and do that um and then as i said the way that i play is very much around the hardcore gadget so kind of using that to my advantage and again you know the more i think about it when i said earlier when we were talking about the different gears that you could go for you absolutely could go for the gear where you have an extra an extra uh, gadget too so you've got more hardcores that you can pop it's absolutely viable personally don't use it quite happy with just using three but there have been a few moments where i feel like i wish i had four in a match so. um final thoughts then on placement in terms of where i would place edgar would definitely have to say he's in the easy category as well um and i'd say that he's easier than a shelly uh, by a noticeable amount as well so you know shelly's been been really good to play as enjoyed playing a shelly but i do think that edgar is a lot more accessible a lot easier um and we've managed to get to 800 trophies again like i said without the hypercharge so that kind of says quite a bit as well whether we'll get him to a thousand without hypercharge we'll have to try and see that'll be my next milestone with him but that is my final thoughts on it if you have any comments or you agree or disagree do definitely let me know in the comments below uh, please let me know if you like this format it's a little bit different to where i did the shelly one so just try to do something a little bit different if you did stay to the end do let me know as well that'd be cool uh but other than that i'll see you in the next one hoping that the next video is going to be mortis um but he's definitely quite challenging so he's roughly around 712 trophies um and he is giving me a run for my money at the moment so uh, definitely a lot harder um, but enjoying it as well. Never thought I'd get him, you know, even to 700 trophies. So that's that's working out well. But yeah, other than that, guys, uh, it's been Jay, Sully, uh, and I'll see you next one. Peace.